My name is Dave Lamb and I'm the General Manager of Student Services and Administration. I have uh, the pleasure of welcoming you all to uh, this afternoon, uh, particularly student leaders. The purpose of this event, uh, of course, is to celebrate the many valuable volunteer hours that student leaders contribute to the university through the wide variety of, of programs supported by the Transition and Advisory Service. Uh, in particular, the peer networking and peer assisted study sessions or PASS program, as well as the contributions students make through the International Student Centre peer mentoring program uh, or through the COMPASS uh, program, which is a school outreach program run by the uh, Office for Future Students. Uh, before we begin the f pr um, formal proceedings, could I just ask you to make sure that you've got your mobiles turned to silent or off? Thank you. And uh, now I'd like to invite the uh, Vice Chancellor and President of the University of Adelaide, Professor Warren Bevington, to the stand. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. I should first acknowledge the Ghana people, original custodians of the Adelaide Plains and the land on which the University of Adelaide's campuses here at Wake, Theberton and Roseworthy are built. Welcome everyone to this celebration of our voluntary student leaders. Transition to university can be a difficult thing. I remember when I was uh, in orientation week as a new student 38 years ago, uh, <clears throat> on the first morning arriving to this ear-splitting um, rock band that you know, drowned out the possibility of any conversation even if one did actually know anybody else, which I didn't. Uh, and then uh, becoming aware that a great many of the students at Melbourne University, this, this was, had come from six elite schools that I didn't come from and all, all who knew each other, uh, but they didn't know me. Uh, I spoke to no one in the first three days. It was an absolutely dreadful uh, experience. <clears throat> and I know that all of you sitting here have made sure that the new students at this university this year didn't have an experience like that. The first few weeks at university can make or break things for students, and I know you've helped um, a great many students adjust uh, to the environment they're going to be in. So, my role today is to say thank you to everyone who's worked with the Transition and Advisory Service in peer networking, and also in the PASS program, and also to the International Student Centre peer mentors. And this year, for the first time, the Office of Future Student Compass Leaders, who've been working with students from underrepresented uh, areas uh, who are new to the University of Adelaide. There's 38 students going to receive a student leadership certificate today, having completed 120 hours of volunteering each. Actually, at last count, the student leaders and mentors have contributed just under 15,000 voluntary hours in the last 12 months. That's an enormous uh, amount of time uh, freely given in the midst of busy schedules in which you too are studying of course. <clears throat> I hope you've realised though that uh, doing what you've just done does develop some skills which can be uh, useful later on. The ability to lead teams of peers, to communicate effectively, um, these are things that are going to stand you in good stead uh, wherever you go. This year we've seen three of the peer networking programs led by student leaders some of whom we'll be hearing from today. Simon Poles, Vibro Sankey, uh, Nuziat Kabir, Mia Tam, and Alistair Pellin. And I'd like to thank them for their efforts in coordinating and leading these programs. <coughs> and in the case of Mia for, uh, and Alistair for assisting in the oversight of the university-wide programs. Thanks also to the academic and professional staff, some of whom are here, who've um, played a role to make these programs possible. 
So, uh, well done. You've uh, really served an enormously important function here that will be appreciated by a great many people not in this room. And I'm looking forward to presenting these certificates. Thank you. Thanks very much, Vice-Chancellor, and thank you also for your continuing support of these programs. Uh, this afternoon, uh, as you've heard, we'll be hearing uh, first-hand accounts of the student leadership experiences from three of our students. Uh, Simon Poles uh, is an honours student in the Bachelor of Animal Science. He became uh, one of our first student peer network program coordinators. Uh, after he speaks about his experiences of leading uh, animates, we will present program certificates to the International Student Centre and Compass student leaders. Our next two speakers will then be Mia Tam, uh, a C senior peer-assisted study sessions leader, and Angus, uh, Anders Magnusson, who was a new PASS leader in 2013. And then we'll con uh, continue on with the presentation of the other certificates. So could I now please ask you to give a warm welcome uh, to our first student speaker, which is Simon Poles. Enrolling in the Bachelor of Animal Science degree was my third attempt at gaining a tertiary qualification. I started university straight out of high school and even tried a second time in another state. However, I never got into the swing of things and subsequently dropped out both times. I ended up getting a job, I got married, moved back to South Australia and had children. When I heard that about the Adelaide, uh, the University of Adelaide was starting up a veterinary science degree. I sat the stat test and applied for that degree. But as a backup, I also applied for the animal science degree. I'm now an honours student in animal science. My first year was still scary, even though I had been to uni a couple of times before. At our faculty information day, I was told that there was going to be a staff member that I could go to if I had any questions, a mentor. Our Roseworthy mentor thought that they were only the mentor for all things to do with Roseworthy. As most of my courses were here at North Terrace, this was a problem for me, as I was having a few issues with my North Terrace subjects and not my Roseworthy one. I got through with the help of some friends I had made and managed not to fail a single subject, just. I quickly figured out that the Roseworthy campus is a unique place and has a feel all of its own, a place I thoroughly enjoy going to even though I live on the southern side of Adelaide. In 2010, when I first heard that there was going to be a student-based mentor system for first-year students at Roseworthy, I thought that I might be able to help. I mainly wanted to offer a service that I feel is necessary for the student experience and for others to have a better experience than I had at, in my first year. I had plenty, plenty of study and life experiences, including dealing with loss and depression, so I figured I had something to offer a wide range of people. In the past, I had never thought of myself as a leader or mentor, but often ended up in these leadership roles. I'm naturally quite a shy person, and I've come out of my shell slowly through different experiences in my life and my shyness is still a challenge that I deal with to some extent. Even with this, I gave mentoring a go. The initial training was interesting to say the least. It was a chance to think about my natural style of leadership and this is something that has stuck with me ever since. Last year, I reapplied to be an animate mentor and ended up being the only one of the previous mentors to continue. This time, there was a mix of peer mentors from both the vet and animal science degrees, and we also had our first full-time coordinator, Elaine. We had planning meetings and organised a rough timetable of, of activities, and we were given a lot of support from Elaine. After O'Day, I allocated mentors to those who had signed up to the program and was in constant discussions with Elaine about upcoming events. I guess I was inadvertently taking on more leadership roles. I thought I was just helping out. 
The, the constant encouragement I got from Elaine and the rest of the student services team at Roseworthy to run with the team's ideas has led me to being up here today. Later that year, I heard that Elaine had to move into state and she could no longer be the coordinator. My first thought was, we have to get to know and deal with a new coordinator and who knows if they're gonna be as helpful as Elaine was. At that time, Audrey came up to Roseworthy for a meeting with myself and Elaine to talk about the future of the animates. Audrey offered me the chance to become a student coordinator. Apparently, what I felt animates could do would be best served with me as the coordinator. As you can imagine, I was a little skeptical, but somehow I, I felt maybe Audrey was right. Maybe I should give it a go. With Elaine and Audrey's encouragement, I decided to try. This year, I attended the enrolment day for our courses. We helped out at Odo. We had a stall at the orientation event organized by the AUU, and we had pancake breakfasts. Every week for the first six weeks, we offered free pancakes to the first years before their lectures in the morning. They came in droves. We often cooked well over 100 pancakes each time. There were only a few mentors, but we were able to talk to small groups of people to see how they were going and if they had any questions. We also offered our student email addresses so that we could be contacted outside of these times. From informal responses I've heard, the first years have enjoyed what the animates have brought them this year. Hopefully we have helped them on the way to having a successful student experience here at the University of Adelaide. For me, accepting the challenge to be a student coordinator has been very rewarding. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. I'd like to take a moment now just to thank the TAS staff for the recruiting and training and, and working with the mentors, mentors throughout the year. And I'd like to thank uh, Emma and Jude and the rest of the team for organizing the event today. So we'll move on to our first set of, uh, of presentations. And these are certificates to the International Student Center Student Leaders Group. Okay, so for the International Student Centre Peer Mentoring Program, the student leaders uh, are Amira Abdul Qadir, <laughs> Yu Deng, <laughs> Philippa Daw. Nicholas Eads, <laughs> Diana Gomez Manjares, <laughs> Waisin Lee, <laughs> Jin Jay Lee, <laughs> Musen Michelle Ma. Arn Pham, <laughs> Vaibhav Sankey, <laughs> Shakira Shafi, <laughs> Georgie Shulga, <laughs> Win Hong Tang. Ruth Waterman, <laughs> Chian Wei, <laughs> Ma 
Junsia Patricia Wu. <laughs> Ling Yuai Zhang. <laughs> Jin Xiao. <laughs> and Shen Zhong. So we'd now like to acknowledge the student leaders in the COMPASS program. And there were 22 leaders who have worked with primary school uh, children uh, this year. And with us tonight, we have Lauren Clark. Adeline Go, Hai Yuan Go. Jin Jai Lee. <laughs> Samantha Peachy. <laughs> Laura Shelley. <laughs> and Yvonne Whitaker Rush. I'd now like to invite uh, Mia Tam and Anders Magnusson to talk about their experiences in the peer assisted uh, study sessions program. And immediately after that, um, we'll be presenting the certificates uh, to the uh, TAS supported peer network uh, mentors program and the PASS leaders uh, program. Thank you, Dave. And congratulations to everyone receiving certificates today. Years ago, I believed that in 2008, I would be standing <clears throat> on this stage to graduate from my Bachelor of Science. This never happened. I began that degree in 2005, directly after high school, and I treated it like just another year of high school. My choice of degree was somewhat arbitrary. I wasn't motivated to learn, and needless to say, that didn't work out too well for me. I failed most of my subjects, and I dropped out at the end of that first year. I spent the following five years studying and working in the music industry. I got married, I traveled the world for two years with my wife, and they were the most enlightening two years of my life. I became fascinated with the contrasts I saw within and between countries, and I discovered that I could study this interest with economics. So here I am. I'm in the second year of a Bachelor of Economics, and because this time I am motivated to learn, everything is different. I'm surprising myself with the grades that I'm getting and with the time and effort that I'm willing to put in to study without a second thought. And uh, this, what this experience has taught me is that motivation is uh, key to study, but it is sometimes difficult or impossible to force. Sometimes you're just in the wrong place at the wrong time, as I found myself in 2005. Last year, I attended PASS peer-assisted study sessions uh, for microeconomics as a student. PASS is a voluntary study group for first-year students of various disciplines. The sessions are led by a volunteer PASS leader like Mia, myself, and the large group of PASS leaders here today who are all trained in peer learning methods. As a student, I found PASS useful to develop my conceptual understanding of the subject by discussing it in small groups and without a rigid framework. The voluntary nature of PASS means that each session is a meeting of first year students who have that motivation that I spoke of. With assistance from the PASS leader, the students leverage that motivation and create a very powerful learning environment. I'm just completing my first semester as a PASS leader. I'm taking part in the program because it really is rewarding to assist first year students in learning something about something they really care about. Further to this, PASS provides a regular opportunity for self-improvement, that is developing the leadership reflection and time management skills that feel very familiar to my time in the workplace. I'm sure the other past leaders value the weekly opportunity to practice these skills as well. 
I've just learned today that I'll be attending the National Pass Forum in Sydney in October, which is another great opportunity that PASS has offered me. The PASS program and mature age networking events that I participate in offer opportunities for shared experiences with my peers, and this builds a feeling of belonging at the university. I look forward to continuing them next semester. Thank you. Thank you, Anders. I began my involvement in the PASS program when it was first introduced at the University of Adelaide in 2011. In my first few years at uni, I was quite shy and reluctant to speak out in classes. However, hearing of the opportunity to engage in the PASS leader program, I thought it would be a good way for me to not only meet new people, but also increase my confidence and be pushed out of my comfort zone whilst helping new students with subjects I enjoy. Being a past leader for me was an extremely rewarding and valuable experience, not only for the development of my own leadership skills, but also for the increased confidence, inspiring students to learn and seeing the light bulb light up when they finally understood a concept is something I will never forget. However, I feel that one of the most important things I gained from PASS was a sense of community and belonging. Not only did PASS enable me to connect with other students, it gave all leaders the opportunity to form relationships with, the, with each other as well as with academics. These relationships I formed have been invaluable, especially as many of us have gone on to commence our honours years together. These connections have made the completion of more challenging coursework enjoyable and a lot less daunting than they would have been otherwise. Being comfortable and familiar with group work and peer learning is extremely helpful when approaching problems that are difficult for one brain to solve. It has also been valuable in easing the transition into becoming a tutor. After two years of running sessions, I was eager to continue my involvement in PASS, even though I was unable to run sessions whilst I was tutoring. I was grateful for the opportunity to attend the National PASS Forum in Melbourne and subsequently become a senior PASS leader. Having the opportunity to discuss PASS with other passionate leaders and staff members from various universities around Australia was invaluable in consolidating my own PASS leadership skills. From this, I was able to bring back new concepts and ideas to help, the, to help develop the University of Adelaide's PASS program, such as training of new leaders, creative ways to run sessions, as well as a large amount of enthusiasm. Giving back to the PASS program as a senior leader is something I have very much enjoyed. Furthermore, I've been presented with many new challenges in my new role that I would not otherwise have had the opportunity to overcome. Being able to take the skills and knowledge I acquired as a leader and at the forum and applying them to different situations. Thanks to the incredible support of Audrey Stratton and the TAS team, as well as fellow leader Alastair Pellin, I feel I have been able to face and overcome these challenges with a lot more confidence. Seeing the effects of PASS from two different perspectives has allowed me to truly believe in the benefits of the program, whether that be to the leaders themselves or to the students who attend. Being involved in such a large expansion of the, of the program and PASS community from our initial foundations this year has been very rewarding, especially in my capacity as a pioneering leader of the program. I look forward to seeing and being involved in the, the development of the University of Adelaide's PASS program into the future. Thank you. Thanks, Mia uh, and Anders. So now we're going to move on to the peer networking uh, and PASS program certificate presentation. So 196 student leaders trained with and participated in one or more TAS supported uh, PASS program. And it's a long way, it's a long walk, so I hope we've got sandwiches in the ambulatory there. <laughs> okay. So for the TAS supported uh, peer networking or PASS programs at mentors, uh, Amira Abdul Qadir. <laughs> uh, 
Elizabeth Alvaro. David Anderson. Yoon Eun Book. Eugene Braslavsky. Lydia Brunick Meyer. Mark Brook. Alan Catalan. Alex Chun. Ying Suan Chuan. Lauren Clark. Maxwell Cooper. Yu Deng. Peter Du. Melita Ferguson. Troy Freed. Yuji Jing. Alexis Jurassimu. Jack Gillespie. Robert Goldecki. Adeline Go. Jake Guscott. Hoan Hua Min Hoon. Lauren Janus. Nuzat Kabir. Aniket Kolkani. Angeline Kundu. Alistair Lau. Arthur Lee. Wei Sin Lee. Sin Lee. Patrick Leeson. Jin Jae Lee. Charlie. Wan Jen Lee. Sherilyn Lian. Ji Chian Lin. Lu Lu. Macy Jessica Luo. Musun Michelle Ma. <laughs> Kelly MacDonald. <laughs> Anders Magnuson. <laughs> Nuru Mohamed Sabi. <laughs> Bao Lok Nguyen. Tu Nguyen, <laughs> Jia Sin Ao, <laughs> Alexis O Young, <laughs> Alistair Pellin, 
and fam. Simon Poles. <laughs> Joyce Poon. <laughs> Morgan Price. <laughs> Huryong Chiang. <laughs> Yashu Chin. Vanessa Rocciano. <laughs> Taylor Rundle. <laughs> Vaibhav Sankey. <laughs> Shakira Shafai. <laughs> Laura Shelley. Georgia Simons, Georgia Simmons, no, Mia Tam, Charlene Tan, Wing Hong Tan, Emily Thorday Kennedy. Nan Truong, <laughs> Bao Ni Vong, <laughs> Jia Lai Jackie Wang, <laughs> Chi Lan Wang, <laughs> Xu Yuan Wang. Zhu Tian Wang, <laughs> Jing Chi Wei, <laughs> Qian Wei, <laughs> Nathaniel Whitrow, <laughs> Yvonne Whitaker Rush. Ellen Wilde, <laughs> Ki Wei Siang, <laughs> Ching Hee Su, <laughs> Michelle Yu, <laughs> Chiu Mu Yu. Anna Singh, <laughs> David Jang, <laughs> Ling Yui Zhang, <laughs> Yi Hong Zhang, <laughs> Jing Zhao, <laughs> Tony Zheng, Shen Zhong. So it's now with great pleasure that I ask uh, Kerry, the coordinator of the Student Leadership Certificate Program, to join the Vice Chancellor in presenting the University Certificates of Student Leadership. This year, 38 leaders, uh, student leaders have fulfilled the extensive requirements through their participation in the Student Leadership Certificate Program. Three of these leaders are unable to attend today, Ms. Navo, Mr. Ahmed Al-Yaribi, and Ms. Uh, Yi Ranwang. But we're delighted to present the certificates to Amira Abdul Qadir, <laughs> Selina Akhtar, Yun Un Buk, Lauren Clark, Philippa Dor, Ms. 
Melita Ferguson. <laughs> Troy Freed. <laughs> Neela Fries Laban. <laughs> Wambui G. Kenya. <laughs> Robert Godecki. Adeline Go. <laughs> Diana Gomez Manjaras. <laughs> Han Ji Yang. <laughs> Anjali Kundo. <laughs> Wei Sin Li. Sherilyn Lian. <laughs> Meng Si Luo. <laughs> Musen Michelle Ma. <laughs> Kelly MacDonald. <laughs> Tu Nguyen. Alexis O. Young. <laughs> Alistair Pellin. <laughs> Anne Pham. <laughs> Simon Poles. <laughs> Yashu Chin. Shakira Shafi. <laughs> Mia Tam. <laughs> GLA Jackie Wang. <laughs> Chian Wei. <laughs> Ellen Wilde. Juncia Patricia Wu. <laughs> Shuang Isaac Wu. <laughs> Jingyua Zhang. Jing Zhao, <laughs> and Mia Lucy Zhu. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of the formal part of the uh, proceedings this afternoon. Um, thank you very much for attending. I hope you're able to stay on and enjoy some refreshments with us afterwards. Congratulations once again to all of the mentors. It's a fantastic job that you do, so thank you very much. We're very pleased to have a student from the old uh, conservatorium to play for us uh, today. So I'd like uh, to offer a special thanks to Tom Cole uh, for your contribution to the session. Thank you very much. <laughs>